She's reclusive, a mystery. She communicates in type. A family trip was planned, with the Antarctic in sight. One day she's gone, disappeared without a trace. It's up to her daughter, a reality to face. An enigma to solve. B was dead set. Where, Where did, did you go, go Bernadette? Cool. Cool? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why I'm like dancing because like, there's like no beat or anything. And also, you're snapping your fingers. <laughs> like, I, like, very like. <laughs> you know when you're little, like when you like really like you don't have, know how to snap or like blow bubble gum or something, and then yeah, you yeah. do it, and you're like, oh my <gasps> god! I Life thought has changed. when I was yeah, when I was younger, I thought snapping was this. It's like I remember being in preschool, going like, why can't I do it? <laughs> I I I still can't whistle. Like, I could whistle, but I whistle like this, like, like uh, instead of, like, with your lips, like, like a kiss. Yeah. I look like a bird. Ah. Uh, like. <laughs> <laughs> both, both times, just air. <laughs> like, it's funny because your little, like, thing of the microphone goes. <laughs> yeah. Just go, <laughs> well, I, okay, there is a home video I'll have to show you. My mom was whistling when I, I think I was like almost three years old. My mom's whistling and she would, I can't whistle, so I'll just do it. She went, woo, woo, and I would go, <laughs> <laughs> It's like an inside joke we have now. Like, I literally, the whole video. Oh my God, I'm sweating your face when you did that. <laughs> I'm going to. <laughs> I'm going to put when this episode comes out, I am putting that home video on our on our Facebook page because it is hilarious. It's just oh me going woo woo and then I'm like <laughs> It's Ron, Uncle Ron whistling. What are you doing that? She's trying to look, look at her. She got like this. I didn't know I made a weird face. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> oh no. This could, that'll be, that'll be a, well, I was going to say, if, if I agree with it, I'll be like, oh yes, that'll be our podcast artwork. Okay, you ready? Okay, ready? <laughs> <laughs> Did you get my tongue or should I move? <laughs> I'm so. <laughs> yeah, no, not that one. <laughs> oh my god, that's so oh, funny. I don't have makeup on right now, so I kind of look like a. <laughs> God, that's hilarious. Oh, and then you started laughing at the end of it. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Now I have to oh blow my, my nose. <laughs> Any tissues? Damn it. All right. I'll be right back. Brittany, entertain the listeners or we'll just cut this part out. <laughs> I'm going to say probably cut this part out. <laughs> what am I going to say? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Alabama, can I answer? Sure. <laughs> Thank you for calling Books as Bad as Twilight. Brittany speaking. How may I help you? They hung up. Damn it. <laughs> oh, that would have been amazing if they answered. <laughs> you have, like put them on speakerphone, but then that would have been not good. <laughs> they probably uh, took your uh, number off now, the spam. Thank you, Brittany. Mm-hmm. Oh, up top. Yeah. <laughs> Who's going to be editing this one? I was just thinking that. I don't know. Because have okay. I given you any episodes? You have, and I, I think you gave me the odds. Okay. I think I did, too. Yeah, I so it's probably going to be me. Okay, good. If this, this is, is part five. Wait. If this is part five in the book, then it's episode six. Oh. So this will be me. Sure. If I gave you the odds. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> <laughs> so now I was, you, you were like, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Because the first episode is like uh, the... Uh, I don't have the intro music. You haven't done it yet. I'll do oh, it today. Okay. Well, I'll try to do it today. I'm doing painting with a twist today. Oh, are you? 
That's why you have to be done by twelve. I was so I thought it was at seven. So I didn't know the Super Bowl was today. I mean, yes. I obviously now I know, but my friend said that it was seven to nine. The painting with a twist. Mm. So when I found out it was a Super Bowl, I was like, "Well, shoot, man, that kind of sucks." But you, you know, don't really I, watch the Super Bowl, do you? I mean, I You're will. You're a baseball fan. Yeah, I'm more baseball. But like, I'll watch it, but like, um, I don't like care that much. My family will watch it, so I'll watch it with them. But I was kind of like, um, I mean. Kind of sucks, but yeah. not a big deal. But then my friend told me that it was actually three to five, and they're picking me up earlier. Oh, so that's okay. why. Well, that's good then. Yeah. So. So we gotta get crack a lack a lack and. We can do it. Or lacking on the crack and. Whoa. What? Whoa. whoa. <laughs> Brittany, I, Brittany, calm down over there. Crackers. Go. Oh. oh. <laughs> Falcon crackers. Crackers, man. <laughs> it tastes so good in soup. <laughs> that's not what I. <laughs> What? <laughs> Look, Brittany. Oh my God, that's so funny. <laughs> I just Bunch really love. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Look, when you said, uh, when I hear a bunch of crackers, I just think, where? Like, where can I eat them? Oh like, you God, know, so like funny. triscuits. Is it Actually, saltine? I prefer saltine. Yeah, I like saltines. I don't know why I just said triscuits. Why I'm would not you pick saltines? They're the most bland. No, no, I know I do like saltines, not all the time, but you know. They're bland, when, but they're when, tasty. When my tummy's upset, give me a saltine. <laughs> I like woke up this morning, like, kind of feeling sick to my like. I had a dream that I was sick, and then I woke up and I was like, "Am I sick?" And it was like this thing, you know. <laughs> then I really woke up and I was like, "I'm not sick." <laughs> That's my story. <laughs> That's a great story. <laughs> it was worth telling. Honestly. Oh my god. <laughs> so, Brittany. Yes, Danielle. Today we're talking about part five of Where'd You Go, Bernadette? Ooh, and uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, it's been a while since we've come to this book, so mm-hmm. it's going to be an interesting conversation. Yeah, so up to this point, um, there's been a lot of stuff going on. Yes. Um, we found out a lot about Bernadette's past. Mm-hmm. We have found out um, that Elgin is a concerned, loving father and husband, but he is is on his last leg with yes. the relationship with Bernadette uh, at work because he has a lot of pressure on him. Mm-hmm. Um, Bernadette, or I'm sorry, um, B, their their child, who's 15, right? Yeah, she's 15. I believe so, yeah. She um, is documenting basically like the downfall of her family. Right. Um, and she's, she's going through a lot of stages that 15-year-olds go through. Mm-hmm. And it's actually very relatable. And um, at the end of part four, we left with a involuntary. Um, What's the word? Intervention. Um, yes. An intervention um, that was organized by Elgin and a psychiatrist from the um, local hospital and who has never done an intervention before. Mm-hmm. And it goes bad it goes bad. really really <laughs> put bad. it lightly yeah um <clears throat> and at the end of it we find that like elgin is kind of just dumping everything on bernadette yeah and like i get it i i, I do mm-hmm. uh i have those moments in my own relationship where you just dump everything on the other person that you've been bottling up and it's right. not healthy right, right everyone go see a couple therapists it's yes. very important <laughs> um so he's unloading on her. The psychiatrist or psychologist, whatever it is, loses absolute control of the intervention. The police are there because, yeah. oh, that's right. I forgot she's been corresponding with someone from overseas. Right. So that's why they're there. Uh, the yeah. FBI is there. Yeah. And then you find out that uh, that Sue Lynn is there. And oh, yeah. um, Bernadette is all upset with that. God, a lot happened through parts one through four. A lot does happen. A lot does happen. Yeah. Um, and then she, while they're investigating the suitcases and Elgin's like, wait a minute, she is coming with us to Antarctica. Right. Like, this hasn't been a lie. She is in her right mind. Maybe I was wrong all along. Bernadette's gone. Yes. Absolutely gone. They don't know where she went. Where'd you go, Bernadette? Where'd you go, Bernadette? We finally made it to that point. And Elgin falls down the basement because oh, he hears right. a weed whacker and cuts up his, like his eye or something like yep. that because uh, of the blackberry bushes. Yeah. Because yeah. of blackberry vines or bushes, wherever they are. Yeah. They have thorns. I didn't know that. I didn't know that either, I but yeah. they're like blueberry bushes. I did too. Yeah. But yeah. Not. No. Look at that. The more you know. The more you know. <laughs> so that's where we end up. Bernadette's gone. 
um, Elgin's left to pick up the pieces. You're right. In part five. Yeah. And it's interesting because um, this, like, for me personally, when I first read this, I kind of thought we were just going to just jump right into it with Bernadette being missing. Mm -hmm. But we're at, like, we're already over halfway through the book and she just went missing. Yeah, we're about two thirds done. Yeah. So I think it's really interesting that it set up all of this Mm -hmm. up until this point. And I'm really invested now. I really want to know. Yeah. It's like you, when you're first reading the first, like, few parts, Mm -hmm. you don't understand Bernadette. And I think it's part three where, or is it part two where you find out a lot about her background? Yes, it is part two. Yeah. That's Bernadette past and present. Past and present. And that's when, and that is when I should have gave the book the shot. Um, mm. I regret the first time picking this up, reading only a few pages into part one yeah. and giving up. That um, happens. Because part two really makes it personal mm-hmm. and relatable. Well, it's kind of like um, this should be out at this point um, with our interview with Adam. And he mm-hmm. was talking about the book, The Things They Carried, and how yeah. in the beginning he was, I know you haven't read it, but are you familiar with it at all? Mm-mm. Okay, yeah. So I won't go into details, but like basically he was just talking about obviously... Um, like how he had a hard time getting into it, and I'm thinking like maybe like come back to it in a few years or a few months or something. He was a child when he read it, right? Exactly. Like <laughs> so, it, it's it's interesting when you first come to a book because I know I've done that too, where I just like do not like a book when I come to it, and sometimes you give up on it. Yeah, which is fine. Like giving up on books is actually a healthy thing to do, so you can move on to other books. But at the same time, it's always nice to come back and be like, oh, yeah, I'm I was wrong. Like like that stuff means different differently to you depending on what age you are exactly like oh what what, like when you relate more to squidward than spongebob oh damn you know because when you're young you look at squidward and be like oh what a like lame person but you realize he he works a like a minimum wage job has an annoying as hell (laughs) like neighbors and all he's trying to do is make art (laughs) yeah all he's trying to do is make art (laughs) poor squidward Oh, and I, before I came here, Kevin and I were making out in the dining room. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I was late. That's uh, <laughs> <And> <laughs> before hey, I came here. <laughs> listen, we've been together for six years. Yeah. I gotta keep it spicy somehow. Oh, <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> making out in the dining room. <laughs> Look, Brittany, That's it's so great. <laughs> but um, he's like, you realize our walls are paper thin. Everyone probably thinks we're nuts outside of our house. Because, like, Kevin and I just walk around the house going, Mah! well, actually, I just do that. <laughs> <laughs> and Kevin, like, yells while he's playing video games. Yeah. So can you, I can't imagine people, like, walking outside of our house. Yeah. Because, like, we're so loud. That's amazing. <laughs> like, honestly, I don't trust a person who doesn't walk around their house and doesn't frequently go, Mah! Like that. Like, I would do that, too. Like your whistling? Like my whistle, which I do because I reference that home video. (laughs) 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 Sorry to people's ears. (laughs) Oh, yeah. that Was that the last episode? (laughs) Yeah, we recorded an intro. So, you know. uh, I think that was in the intro. That's amazing. It's a good callback. It's a callback. Oh, yeah, exactly. It's a callback. Specifically only for Brian. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Brian, we love you. <laughs> All right, so That's Bernadette. Uh, yeah. So part five is actually called Dangers Past. Mm-hmm. But did I? Yeah, past. Um, so let's get into it, shall we? So, yeah. um, it's been a while for both of us, so we're gonna do our best. So we open up um this section with a letter from Elgin to B. Yeah. So uh, we find out in this letter that she has gone to that boarding school he originally set her up to go to while Bernadette was in um, rehab, essentially. So um, from the tone of the letter from Elgin to B, you could tell that B's not really talking to him much. Yeah, there's a lot of tension there. There's a lot of tension there. And that's very hard to convey in just dialogue. It really is, yeah. So, like, um, he's trying to reference like her projects back at her old school being all done like the the giraffe mug that she mm-hmm. she made it's like it's it's ready to pick up just let me know when you want to get it he's very overcompensating for all the time he missed mm-hmm. yeah. uh and that is in reference to um what she had said to him on that the space needle yeah 
So she called him out on that, basically never being around. And it really upset him Mm -hmm. uh, because everything he's doing is trying to provide for his family. Right, right. Um, So he's trying to be both parts of the relationship now, uh, the mother and the father, because Bernadette's not there. Right, right. Um, And we found out find that B willingly went away. So she didn't even want to be home anymore. Right. You know, she yeah. didn't want to be around and, and try to find her mother with her father. Mm-hmm. You know, like she just uprooted and left. And it's interesting too because like that whole tension that's going on between the two of them, you can just feel it when yeah. you're reading this book. Like especially in this part, obviously, mm-hmm. it is. It's just so well conveyed um and it and again it's like through this letter through other things but like it's not an easy task to do that without narration in some form Mm -hmm. and this book or this part i should say does it really beautifully yeah um i i I, well i I should i was gonna say i really love this part but i actually loved every part of this book i know you didn't love part one i did love that in my own way but still like Mm -hmm. this is just so good and we also get um Sue Lynn and Audrey corresponding. In this section, yeah. Audrey went to Arizona <gasps> with her son. Audrey snapped. <laughs> Audrey, <laughs> <laughs> like she snapped more than she already snapped. Like, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> after the incident in the hotel room, yeah, where um, the her son. What's your son's name? Oh, um. Adam or something, Steve. You know, I'm forgetting. I'm trying to see. Uh, I don't know. I'm not seeing his name in this section. Whatever it may be. Yeah. When she finds out that he's actually doing drugs and alcohol, and he's not the prize child that uh, she anticipated, like she always believed him to be. <sighs> yeah. She sent him off to Utah. <laughs> yeah. Ever it is to do like those reform camps. Yes. Where they literally just drop you off in the wilderness and say survive. We'll come back for you in two weeks. What is that show called? Um, Scared Straight. No, it's uh, um, it's like the. Uh, Man versus Wild. Mm-hmm. I don't know yeah, if that's, that's it. One. Yeah, but yeah. there's another one where like Naked and Afraid. That's naked what I was afraid. thinking of. Yeah. Oh, Naked and Afraid. But yeah, like <laughs> those those camps actually exist though. Oh yeah, it's scary. How actually. terrifying is that? I when I read that, I was like, wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's intense. Yeah. So she drops him off, and then she's like, I, and then she's like stalking her own Kyle. son, Kyle. Yeah. <laughs> so she's stalking Kyle. And like just driving him around, and like I don't know, it's it's a very weird dynamic. But she also <laughs> is like all of her communications are through facts in this yeah. part. Mm-hmm. Uh, a little bit through com- no, no, the computers is another time. Um, yeah, but she's like using very antiquated ways of communication because like she's on the move. <laughs> yeah, well, it's interesting too because like what we got from her before was kind of very. I don't know if snarky is the right word, but just like there was a lot of, again, tension between her and Sue Lin. Remember when she started? Is that the word you're looking for? Yeah, she was pretty pretentious. Like when she stayed at Sue Lin's house Mm -hmm. and she was kind of like saying, oh, well, you didn't want this done. Well, I already did it for you. Like, no big deal. I'm helping out. We're here. She's kind of like. I already set up the. Yeah. Oh, what is it? Yeah. um... um, Shows you how Christian I am. (laughs) set up the manger scene yeah yeah (laughs) well exactly yeah and so she's kind of like doing things without her friend's permission and just like being like oh it's fine like i'm I'm a good person i like like audrey more at the end of this book than sulin so agreed i am on audrey's side (laughs) well and it's interesting because this is the first part at least for me i don't know what you can say to this but like this is when i first started changing my opinion about that because sulin started going downhill already but this is when I saw Audrey differently. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. Well, no, I still see Audrey the same. Okay, it's at this just point. It's Sulin tanked. <laughs> well, Sulin did tank. I mean, I see Audrey differently just because she starts to change. She does change. Yeah. She does change a lot. Yeah, so, like, in that regard. Yeah. Um, th- Like, I, I still don't think Audrey is the best person ever, but I think that she's, in some ways, and we haven't, this is not that part, but she, yeah. in some ways, like, grows as a person, at least, where yeah. Sulin kind of... Like you said, she tanks. <laughs> yeah, she really does. Um, but like, she's just much more like where she was kind of to the point with her messages before. Now they're much long. Or, well, then again, hers were still long. But I guess what I'm saying is like, 
she was much more kind of straightforward where here she's like kind of airy about things i don't know if that's the right way to describe it but she seems a bit more carefree instead of worrying oh i see what it means and maybe yeah. that's the wrong word she's, but do you know what i'm getting at yeah like, before reading her messages it was all about her own image yes and how she yeah. was being presented to everyone right, right you know she was this um person that could do no wrong and her yeah. son could do no wrong and she was always in the right but yeah. now <clears throat> she it feels like she's accepted that like more she's self-aware. Not, yeah, she's more self-aware. Mm. She's definitely as weird, as flaky as <laughs> yeah. as she was before. Yeah. But instead of blaming outside sources, she is looking internally. Right. And you could really get that feel from a couple of her messages. I mean, it's not outright. Um, yeah. She's still very image centric. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's it's definitely more. It's it's less blamey. Yeah. Would you say that, like, I guess growth in a person is a gradual process, so the book is kind of like... Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I also feel that people still adhere to their core per- person, like, personalities. For sure, yeah, yeah. So, like, yeah, even though there's growth to a person, if you are so egotistical, you're going to be throughout your entire life i think and this might be speaking to broader things outside of the book but i Mm -hmm. I was thinking about this the other day i think what i've noticed in people is that and this is good for writing as well is that people often in their lives are influenced by oftentimes one or two factors they might not even be aware of them Mm -hmm. and it like influences their entire person like it's like a tree grows out of this one thing and then everything kind of sprouts from it almost yeah if ego was the thing that is her tree then everything else is growing from that. So maybe she doesn't lose that ego, Mm -hmm. but something else comes from it in a way. Yeah. Um, At least that's how I've always, or not always, but sometimes I think of it that way, Mm -hmm. whether it be a good way to think about it or not, but just an idea. Um, But, you know, so, um, so we get a lot of correspondence between Sue Lynn and Audrey. Um, It's great. Take your time. Yeah. I was going to say like, there's a lot here. Actually, Audrey wrote, I just, yeah, or no, Sue Lynn, actually. Sue so Lynn l- writes a lot about her relationship with Elgin now. She does, yes. At this point. And. Is this the part? <sighs> yes, it is. Yeah. This okay. is the part where I get very upset and angry with Elgin. Yeah, me too. Me too. Yeah. Um, Basically, his wife is gone. Uh, His daughter is gone. And, uh, like. In, in a lot of ways, like, she's mentally checked and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And you find out that Sue Lin is pregnant. Yeah. That and just, Elgin's like... good. That... I... Uh, I don't believe it. Uh, I, like... I, I, I honestly do not believe it. I... I don't know. I mean... Well... I'm talking about well, at the point that I know, or that I don't know. You know what I mean? Right, yeah, yeah. As if this is, I'm just reading it. Oh, yeah, yeah, no worries, yeah. No worries, yeah. Um, I don't believe it. She's nuts. Yeah, I... I didn't know what to think, honestly, when I when I read this. Because my first thought more was, like, instead of, like, what you just said, you don't believe it. Mm-hmm. My first thought was, like, are you freaking kidding me? Yeah. Like, out of all the things that had to happen in this book, like, now she's pregnant. Yeah. Like, that just... Like, the idea of, like, her being pregnant and the family coming back together after something like that happened just seemed very difficult to me. And Wait, what do you mean? Like, if Sue Lynn's pregnant, meaning Bernadette, Elgin, and B. Oh, like, you mean, like, in the future? Yeah, like, how could this be resolved now that Sue Lynn is pregnant? Like, yeah. how is there any way to come back from this? And that was my yeah. first initial thought. Well, like, for, for me, um, I don't think she's pregnant mm-hmm. because, you know, like... A, she's nuts. She's nuts. She is nuts. Yeah. Um, there's a thing that called false pregnancies. Yes. And yeah. like, oh, yeah, you could get so far into your own mind yeah. that you experience pregnancy symptoms. Yes. And you, like, you can have those experiences without even having sex. No. Yeah. You're. Yeah. You know. So like, I think. Well, because in the hotel room. You know, I th- I think this is the... I, did we get to that part? Let me see. Um, I don't know. You might be better looking at this than I am, actually. Um, I'm curious but, where that is. 
Yeah, because I, I, it might be in this part. I feel like it is, but I'm not positive. That we find out that, because she, I, I think it was in the past. Because does, yeah, doesn't she, like, talk about, like, that that time in the hotel room? She goes into details about what happened. I know there is a section of that, but I don't know if that's in this part or not. Oh, okay. There it is. Cool. Um... Thank God it was pitch black. It was pitch black or the room would have started spinning. I got up and drove myself home. I was lucky I didn't drive myself off the 520 bridge accidentally or otherwise. So, um, yeah, so they didn't do anything. She is talking about the hotel. Okay. Um, This is when she was burned or what is it called? Burned? Uh, Torched by the VAV. Yeah. The timeout reality check. <laughs> I got torched by the VAV. I am forbidden to return until I WYP and read it. WYP stands for write your part and pronounced uh, weep, not wipe. <laughs> 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 Which it sounds. <laughs> That's amazing. See, it's WYP and I didn't even read it as like an actual like. Because they That's have torched. That's amazing. Right. <laughs> That's really funny. Uh and owning our abuse, if I find myself um, succumbing to victimhood, I have to torch myself. I spent the last three hours weeping. So here it is if you're interested. The Weep by Su Lin Seagal. Oh, that's her last name? Seagal. Seagal, yeah, I believe. Funny. Yeah. Um, so they went to... She talks about how she was falling in love. Mm, uh, yeah. And she torched herself. Um, through this whole time. Are you leaving? No. A minute passed. I maintained an image of where Elgin was on the bed. I could visualize his head, both arms over the covers, his hands clasped over his chin, which is weird. Why would someone... <laughs> right, I know. That's a weird position. <laughs> that is a weird position. <laughs> uh, he obviously waiting for me to make the first move. Mm-hmm. Reality check. Ha! Huh. I jabbed <laughs> my hand toward what I pictured his hand to be. My hand plunged into something moist and soft, then sharp. <laughs> she <laughs> stuck her hands in his mouth. I forgot about that. Yeah, me too. So, yeah. And then he talks about how the most painful part was the FBI file was that Bernadette wrote to Paul. I wish I could go back in time and tell her I want to know. I want to know her. Maybe if I had done that, I wouldn't be lying here right now. Mm. And then so she's like, Mark. yeah, I, yeah. I wonder if like, like what's interesting is that Su Lin in a way not only is she kind of doing a downward spiral as a character for, like, the readers, because, I mean, I know we talked about this, but, like, for me, I was actually on her side a lot in the beginning. Were you really? Not, like, not to say on her side against Bernadette, but on her side in terms of her and Audrey. You thought she was an innocent character. Yeah, like, I thought that she was, (laughs) despite the victims against victimhood thing, she was... I absolutely hate that organization. Me too. Like, when I read that, I was like... I don't know even what to make of that, but like I, that makes me so uneasy. But go ahead. Well, it does. It's very uneasy, and like, but just like her as a victim to uh, like in like with Audrey, like um, mm-hmm. sort of be being belittled by Audrey. Yeah. But she not only kind of tanks as like a character, but like literally in her own life, like her what was important to her, her victims against victimhood. Now she like is, abandoned her. Yeah. Like. Yeah. So it's interesting. It is interesting. Because nice. that's disgusting. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, I feel for for my own perspective, um, Sue Lin. I I didn't dislike her very short, like into the book. Yeah, but I did feel that things were off, especially yeah. when they start when they went to the church and she's talking about how they had lunch and like stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I was like. Uh yeah. no. I did think uh, 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 uh. I will say now that I'm remembering things, I didn't like her closeness with Elgin, I remember, yeah. and I thought it was kind of strange like how she was acting so innocent about it. Yeah. And it's like 
It's cool that this is the only part that you see her actual insanity when yeah. she tortures herself. Right. You know, so weird. I know it's weird. Yeah. It also sounds like touches herself. Yeah. Which, oh, gross. yeah. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> I mean, like touching yourself is fine. Yeah, yeah. We're not saying do. that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to have this. Yeah. No. <laughs> Sorry, Brian. Don't listen to your children. <laughs> Oh, there's but, so many things I want to say right now. But I'm not going to. So it's all right. <laughs> um, it just, yeah, she started getting weird. But yeah. this is where we get the reality between what happened with Sulin and Elgin because it, mm. it is a little vague. It is you vague. Know, yeah. uh, from the correspondence that B gets from, um, the files, of, like, because we have to remember B is compiling this. This, we don't know how or why, like how do how she got all of this stuff. It still like makes me mad. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I hope they they explain that before we come to an end. Mm-hmm. But the narration in the first couple of parts is very limited, right? Um. Yeah. So then we have this huge chunk of expedition. Mm-hmm. Is that what's called exposition? Um, exposition. Exposition. Not expedition. Exposition. For some reason, I just thought you said exposition. <laughs> then when you said, "Did I say that?" I'm like, "Wait, I don't think you did." <laughs> like, so that was weird in my brain. But go ahead. We have this huge, like, we have this huge narrative. Mm-hmm. Um, and this this author is so smart because yeah. oh yeah, like she in order to get this point across, what she wants to talk about across. She created the whole victims against victimhood so she can have this plot dump as right. well. Yeah. Like, oh, in case you're interested, I have to write this out mm. and take responsibility for my actions of the parts. Right. And I need to tell someone I trust, which is Aubrey, mm-hmm. even though they're not that much friend. Like, they're not close anymore. Yeah, they're, yeah, so true. You know, uh. She still has to tell her story and she still has to do a reality check. Mm-hmm. So. And... Speaking um, of Audrey, by the way, mm-hmm. I forgot that in this part, I have a tab here. This is the part where we get Audrey's perspective on everything that happened. Um, oh. I didn't realize it was in this part, but this is where she goes into her entire explanation. She's writing to her husband, Warren, uh, facts from Audrey Griffin to her husband. That's right. Um, where she just goes in like full into her perspective on the whole situation, talks about how... Um, She lied about Bernadette running over her foot. That never happened. Mm -hmm. Uh, She faked the whole thing. And the the mudslide, Bernadette removed the blackberries exactly as I asked her to do. Audrey, it's interesting this part because she is, we talked about self-awareness, but she truly is so self-aware in this relaying of information. Like basically saying... (laughs) Lightly, I fucked up. (laughs) Like I mean, truthfully, like... It's interesting that she's coming to this point at the same time that she's trying to reform her son. Yeah. You know. It's very interesting. I was so surprised. Mm -hmm. I got to say, like, when I read this, I was like, oh, so we're just getting this. Because it's a commentary, because it's a satire. This book is a satire. Do you think it's the common, like, it's a commentary of how when we remove ourselves from toxic environments, we could truly become what we're supposed to be? Eventually, or yeah. uh, like um, take responsibility for our own actions because they are in Silicon Valley. Right. You know, there's a lot of pressure in this area to keep up appearance and a certain reputation. Mm-hmm. So now that she's out in Ohio or Wisconsin or wherever she may be, she's taken away from that environment mm-hmm. and she could look and take away that it's not me attitude. Right, right. And... And yeah, yeah, that's actually a really good observation because yeah, like there is this sort of pressure and especially depending on where you live, obviously, but like to be a certain way. The thing I always think about is like Desperate Housewives, something like that, where Mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. you're living on this nice neighborhood street and you have to keep up appearances and you have to be that beautiful housewife who dresses nice and bakes pies and has beautiful children Especially because she was lower class in comparison Mm -hmm. to everyone. Right. And so it's just, it's just such an interesting. And she, (sighs) and she married a lawyer. Yeah. Who isn't the best lawyer. Right. You know, he's an alcoholic. Uh, Oh, he's, he's not, he's a public attorney. Public attorney. Yeah. Yeah. So like he's, um, he gets assigned to be public defenders. Mm, Public public defender, rather, not a public attorney. So, like, 
those are not people working on the big cases. They're working on the hits and runs and the tax right. evasions and mm-hmm. like stuff like that. Right. Like, well, and here's another example too of like how this book, like we talked about in the one part, I believe, I don't know if it was part four or part three where B goes to the Rockettes and they sing. That's, um, I think that's, th- that's four because she's there mm-hmm. when the intervention is happening. Right. Okay. So, um, What's interesting is that um, it's it says, I dropped to my, this is still Audrey, I dropped to my knees, tell me, God, I said, tell me what to do. And so it's interesting that, like, obviously, like, we know from what she said to be, I believe, in part one, where she was talking about, like, be you're a nice child, like, kind of like a come to Christ moment, like, um, mm-hmm. and you know how manipulative that can be. But in this moment, she's, even though she's still kind of, manipulative about like religion she's actually using it in an authentic way like yeah god like tell me what to do like a very humble way almost um because she is a christian yeah and but, that's yeah so that's very that, that surprised me too to be honest i think i think generally and this is not for everything but my observation of things is that like especially in literature christianity is also something always something people are overcoming they're overcoming the What's the word? Um, it begins with an O. Um, the oppression that occurs, like yeah. in Christianity, and I always find it interesting when books about religion mm-hmm. are basically, or not maybe not about religion, but having religion in them, are basically setting up that it's not always oppressive. Like it can be oppressive. I was just about to say it's interesting that you use that word, considering mm-hmm. that it's the same exact dialogue B uses in that thing. You remember oh. she talks about her mom. Uh, making fun of them, saying they're oppressive, but no, she realizes now church is where they could be free to mm-hmm. worship. Right. You know, it's so it's yeah. interesting that it, that's how you worded that. Right. Yeah, I completely forgot about that, but yeah, you're right, and it's just it's kind of refreshing to me, like because I, I do don't get me wrong, I love like the narratives where people are overcoming their religion that like kind of held them down from things but at the same time it's also nice to see that there is it's not black and white like, no absolutely not some people take solace in religion exactly and religion in its own way is very important so hey, hey. whether whatever you believe is important so like you know well, i just yeah that's yeah. one of the first, that's one of the parts of aa alcoholics anonymous yeah is that you had to put your belief in something greater uh, even if it's just yourself right you know if it's the group if it's a family member if it's a god if it's yourself you have to put that faith in something right you know because life is hard enough to do alone right that you can't if somebody takes solace or finds comfort Mm -hmm. in a god in whatever form it may be Mm -hmm. let them have it right exactly let them have it that's not it's not you to judge them no matter what Right. And it's and it's also interesting too, building off of what you said earlier about removing yourself from toxic situations in order to become better. That's such a true statement. Like mm-hmm. sometimes there's like it's kind of like you have to pull the thorn out of your side in order to like start to heal kind of. Oh, kind of like cutting the diseased branch from a fig tree. Damn. Jesus. <laughs> You're good. <Yeah. laughs> it yeah. all circles back. It does. These thoughts have <laughs> It's so funny. These thoughts have been around for God knows how long. Oh, yeah. But people still don't (laughs) grasp it correctly. Well, it's interesting you say that because so I have a friend who we're like kind of doing a book club together. We read A Christmas Carol. Yeah. And she was saying to me like she just doesn't know much about the Bible, even though she was raised Christian. Mm -hmm. um, She really was never interested in it. And um, like so much so that she didn't know the golden calf story. Like I explained that mm-hmm. to her and she didn't mm-hmm. know it. So she really doesn't know it. But she said, to me, she's like, you know, Danielle, I just feel so kind of lost when I read books of literature because there's so many references to the Bible that yeah. when you read literature, it's like almost like really important kind of to know the Bible in a way. Yeah. And I don't know. It's just so fascinating that how true that is. When you get into history of that type of stuff, yeah. it's mind blowing. Yeah, because like how how Christians, um, I'm actually gonna bank more on Catholicism. Yeah, yeah. has inf- like has corrupted so much mm-hmm. culture. Yes, that everything's infused with it. 
Oh, because yeah. when I went to New Orleans, mm-hmm. you know, when you hear voodoo, yeah. you don't think it's associated with Christianity at all. Right. That was a big push when, um, back in the day, uh, the Pope at the time, I forget who it was, said that voodoo's okay mm. to practice. Because they were trying to convert them to Christianity. Right. And so he was comparing voodoo to uh, Christian principles and beliefs. So in voodoo, they have people that represent um, what you want. Like mm. they have one that represents love. You you do a ritual for this person or whatever. And the Pope said, what you're doing is praying to a patron saint. Mm. so he was like whoever this person is you have saint marie of whatever Mm -hmm. that's who that's who we believe it is in christianity right Uh you know like if you lost something you do something for this voodoo representative Mm -hmm. it's like no actually it's saint anthony that's so interesting you know that's and that's how they bridge the gap yeah so it was easier to convert Right. People into Christianity. And so that... I didn't know that. Yeah. I I learned that on a voodoo tour. That's so cool. Yeah. Wow. Nuts, isn't it? It It is nuts. It's the same thing when they put Christ's birthday on Christmas to correlate with the pagan beliefs. Right. Pagan beliefs. You're... It's such a... It's a, a bastardization de- of the belief. It is, and that's why oh. I don't. That's why I don't follow the church. As yeah, in, right. I do believe that there is some, someone out there. Right. I be, I believe there's more to life than what we see. Right. Um, because that's really really sad if humans are like the cream of the crop. <laughs> oh you <know>? man, <laughs> that's really quite sad. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I don't like to think that we are, right. but I don't know what's out there. Right. No one does. It's kind of, it is interesting Interesting that you said, like, a bastardization, because it kind of is, like, it's just, and like you said, it's so ingrained in our culture that to, us like, at this point, everybody would have to become super self-aware to escape that, and yeah. I highly doubt that's going to happen as much as I would like it to. It's just not going to. People don't realize how so many things are so ingrained in our culture that we don't even question it, but, like... If you start to think about it, so many layers pull away, and it's like, I can't yeah. even wrap my head around it, honestly. Well, it's... patron saints are based on Greek and Roman gods. Yeah. You know? <sighs> I wish I... <sighs> Which was there long before Christianity yeah. in any way, shape, or form. I wish I had more, like, time and energy to, like, Look read about this stuff. stuff, and just because I would love to read it's more about nuts. that. Like, oh, that'd be so nuts. much fun. But It's, uh, it's fun scary and also yes. to be incredibly dry and boring which is why i don't <laughs> yes exactly that's i was just about to say the same thing i have an issue like i love learning about history but my issue is that i get really bored really yeah, quickly somebody has to talk to me about it right like, like, i can't listen yeah. i can't i can't read it right i can't read it if it's a history book i have to do audible and even then i struggle yeah so i fake history listen to them I do him. listen to yeah yes he's very good. Uh, what if what episode? I think I'm on the Napoleon episode. I'm oh, pretty okay. early in. Yeah. Like, so, but yeah, yeah, I, I like do him. like that. He's show. a good guy. He is. Yeah, I really like that show. Oh, go check it out, folks. <laughs> yeah, Arctic history. Um, Anyways, but anyway, are, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was a little bit of tangent. Hey, tangents are great, right? Um, so we're at the torched part. We already talked about that. Yeah, and so oh. this, yeah, it's 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 a lot of explaining themselves. So during that part where I. Uh, Aubrey is confessing to Warren. Is this where we also find out that she helps her? Yes. So, so let me see. Ahead. It says um, those. She talks about Christmas. Those days leading up to Christmas were a nightmare. Um, she says the contents. Oh yeah, Sula. This returned. is actually really important. I think yeah. you should read the, this part. Should I read the whole thing? Yeah. Okay. So let me see. I don't want to. Oh, start right you mean there. Aubrey's whole thing? Well, I won't read the whole thing, but there's like a certain part right here that I want to read. And I'm trying to see where it actually starts. Um, Okay. Su Lin returned home late that night. And while she slept, I rifled through her bag. In it, I found a classified FBI dossier. Is that how you say it? Dosser? Um, The contents were astonishing. Bernadette had unwittingly given her financial information to an identity theft operation. And the FBI was conducting a sting. Even more shocking were post-it notes stuck to the back of the file. 
They were handwritten between LG and Sulin, suggesting that he was meeting with Madrona Hill because Bernadette was a harm to herself and others. His evidence? That she had run over my foot and destroyed our home. Yeah. So then obviously we went into how she lied about that. And let me see. Th- yeah, this is very important. Yeah, I'm trying to see. I want to read. I want to read it, but I can't obviously read all of it. So let me see. Okay, I'll start here. Um, this one, she drops to her knees. Tell me, God, what? Because she basically is like, oh, my God. She's this having is... a crisis. Exactly. So that's why she falls to her knees and said, tell me, God, what should I do? And so she says, a calm came over me. A calm that has protected me for the past month. I walked to the 24-hour Safeway. I used to work for Safeway. Oh, did you? <laughs> Gennardi's, but they're owned by Safeway, so technically. <laughs> um, made a copy of every document in the file, plus the post-it notes, and tucked the originals back into Sulin's bag before anyone was up. While everything in those documents was true, it was a partial truth. I was determined to fill in the story with my own documentation. The next morning, I ransacked our house for every email and note I could find about the mudslide and my injury, then spent the whole day assembling them chronologically with Bernadette's emails from the FBI file. Oh, my God. So this is how, like, when we were talking about in the previous parts, it's like, how how did yeah. this make sense? How did this pair up with one another? Exactly. So this is, when I was reading this, I was like, oh, damn. Yeah. Like, we're... <laughs> yeah, we're, we're getting there. Yeah. And so, let me see. Oh, yeah, this, so then she gets Kyle to help her hack into <laughs> the windows. <laughs> this is so interesting. And Kyle, like, what's interesting here is that her kind of deadbeat son, who we knew was deadbeat, yeah, who she loved and adored. Like we're actually kind of seeing like that he actually has some talent. <laughs> like he's, he's actually not... smart. Yeah, yeah he so... just doesn't apply himself. Exactly. Yes, yeah, which so... is so indicative to the tech world. <laughs> come on now. <laughs> I mean, like sometimes it's true, but also come on. <laughs> no, it is. Like it, it I, is. I know so many people that are just like, eh, I really don't want to learn how to code. But I will if it gets me free movies. You know that's like. true. <laughs> yeah. So true. You're right. <laughs> um, so let me see. So he helps her, and then she reads the correspondence between Elgin and Sulin. Bastard. Yeah. I'm sorry. Go on. <laughs> no, that's okay. Um, and then Kyle still hacking stuff. She gets a screenshot of some things. And let me find oh, the chats. Yeah, and then the intervention was happening. At Dr. Nagard's office. Knee guards? Knee guards office. <laughs> Shin guards. <laughs> <laughs> I love when you just said that. <laughs> I didn't want to interfere with an FBI investigation, but there was no way Bernadette was going to get hauled off to a mental hospital because of my lies. At 9 a.m., I headed to the dentist's office. On my way, on a hunch, I drove by Straight Gate. There was a police car in the driveway, as well as Sulin Subaru. I parked on the side street. Just then, a familiar car zoomed by. It was Bernadette behind dark glasses. I had to get this file to her. But how would I get past the police? Mm-hmm. How indeed. Bum, bum. So she goes into the backyard, claws her way across the mud, and goes to... um. She, like, gets into her lawn, and I guess she's... Let me find the actual part. Yeah. Well, like, does she find, I guess, the ladder just laying there? I'm trying yeah, to find that from, part. Uh, the part before where they blocked oh. themselves out of the mansion. Yes. And they could hear ice cream barking and stuff yes. like that. So um, she finds a ladder that was discarded on the side of the home. Yeah, she trips over it. And so she... Um, oh, then she says, as if God had placed it there himself. And so she feels invincible now. And she sees a window open. And there's Bernadette. Mm-hmm. So, basically, she helps Bernadette get out. Yep. So, she is the reason Bernadette escaped. So, it's so interesting. If this was a um, mystery. Yeah. It is a mystery. It but is. But if it was, like, a true mystery, mm-hmm. this is where the book would end. Exactly. This is where it would be finished. And it's not. hmm You know, it, it just... That's why I love it. Yeah. Because, I mean... Are you, I forget, are you a mystery fan? I like mystery, but I yeah. haven't read a lot of it. Okay. I I, I don't want to say I dislike mystery, but I just don't like the formula behind it. How every single time it's like the same thing over and over again. Like, Oh, really? Uh, I don't think it is. Well, meaning like it always starts off with obviously a mystery. And then at the end, there's an info dump, meaning like this would be the end of it. Like, like um, what's that book I read? Murder on the Orient Express. Mm-hmm. I hated that book because that book basically <laughs> like 
it built up to this huge thing and at the end of it not only did i find it unsatisfying but it just like the explanation of it i'm like mm. oh my god like so i'm just not a mystery person like yeah. Um, Because every genre has to follow a certain formula. Yeah, and that's why I don't don't, like the formula of this. I I don't at all. Mystery, rather, and that's why I like when books take that and kind of twist it, and that's why I would really like this. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, you're right. If this this was a mystery, this is where it would end. It would begin at her disappearance, right, and end here with Audrey admitting (laughs) exactly. And it's interesting that this book, those two parts, are one. Right, yeah. You know, it's literally this part because she's gone, mm-hmm. and shoop, this yeah, is, this is why she disappeared. That's so, so interesting. Yeah. At the actual very end of this, um, this part, we get a letter to Elgin about um, recent because he put it he put it out there that uh, their credit cards be tracked. Um, so this is. We find out that Bernadette's credit card was used on a cruise to the Antarctic. Yep. And it has the log of what she did. She went, she checked in and out of her room, she drank, blah, blah, blah. She was seeing all, like, she got the same drink every night. Mm -hmm. And then she was gone. Yeah. She was gone. There was no evidence of her leaving the boat. Mm-hmm. And so now we're on our second mystery of where did she go? Where did she go? And what's interesting to me about this book, like I'm obviously, you know, like I love classics, but the thing I struggle with with reading classic books a lot of times is that I don't find them. I am. I'm enjoyed. Like I find them enjoyable, but mm-hmm. in a way that's not really like I want to keep coming back to them. Yeah. Like I love Pride and Prejudice. Now that I've read it, I like to come back to it. But when I first read it, it wasn't like, oh, I can't wait to read Pride and Prejudice. Mm-hmm. Like, again, I can't wait to read. That's do, good. Do, Thank do. you. Um, file unemployment. Oh. <laughs> it's a good thing it said that because I swiped it away earlier. I'm like, oh, shit, I probably should have kept that there. So that's good. Um, but no, like, um, like well, I was reading Oliver Twist earlier this in 2018. And like, there was never a point where I was like, oh, I really want to read Oliver Twist. Like, yeah. But with this book, not only do I find it really smart and kind of literary in a certain way, but it's <laughs> intensely readable. Yeah. Like, you want to keep reading. And that rarely happens for me, kind of surprisingly, mm-hmm. since I do love books. But, like, I never – it's hard for me to find a book that I really want to keep reading. I was going to say, maybe you should read more – Try try mystery and suspense again, then maybe i don't know there's so many books i want to read that yeah. i don't even know if i want to give those a shot like like i not not to yeah. say that i would ignore them but like just because there's so many other books i'd rather be reading but those are the type of books that keep you going that's yeah. the whole no you're right purpose, yeah the whole formula of it yeah. is to keep you reading right you know and typically this is this is a big one it is typically a big one. mysteries and stuff like that are very small that's They're true about 200 pages i do have one book it's like I forget what the series is called but it's like a library mystery it's like a series of library <laughs> mysteries it's cute and i'm like i really want to read this so um it looks like kind of kind of hokey but hey i'll give it a shot maybe hokey it doesn't mean bad no so true um but anyway and that boop, 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 finishes boop, boop, boop. Part, part five that that was way shorter than i remember it being but yeah that was a pretty short it part. is pretty short and it is a lot of information just For given sure. to us because now we're having a we have a full picture of what's mm-hmm. going on you know yeah um because we get the side the the mystery of whether or not elgin and sulin did or didn't yeah yeah you know in the hotel room and we learned that we th- they didn't mm-hmm. which is why it is it's such a weird place to put the um pregnancy and yeah yeah so that's why i also don't think she's actually pregnant um oh, interesting okay so and then we get all of the information from aubrey I yeah um <laughs> yeah it's interesting that um now we've kind of gotten to the point of like the book title drop sort of yeah. where'd you go Bernadette but and now we're having like the actual mystery of finding her like before we had a different type of mystery going on we're now we're really into the we're in the end game of the book basically yeah. we're going to find out what happened to Bernadette mm-hmm. um not or, a lot or of we think <laughs> not a lot of commentary from B in this section no or if any yeah i I was gonna say yeah um because we also get points of b's input Mm -hmm. um throughout the book that it's like separated 
from uh, the emails and the communication. So this part where there's nothing. Right. Yeah, that's very true. Uh, in the absence of B, uh, it, it didn't really, I didn't really notice until you just mentioned it, but it was mm-hmm. interesting. Interesting choice. Like, cause I think it it's, is. it's trying to separate her from what's happening. Like, meaning she's sort of, if she's looking at these documents as we think she is, I'm assuming. <gasps> Wait, th- I think there is a section. Go ahead. Like, okay, well, pretending like that she's still not in it, like that, um, that she's taking this all in just as the reader is. Yeah. You know, um, there's a captain's report. I guess there is one section of where I, I, I think it's a communication between, uh, Elgin and what's his name? Ah, oh, from, the... Br- from Bruce Jessup yeah. to um, Elgin. And Bruce Jessup is the, I guess, a, a counselor or advisor um, at the boarding house that B's at now, yeah. the, the boarding school. Basically saying that um, she is not living up to the expectations of the school. Mm-hmm. Um, quote, Yet, from B's first week, I receive reports that she is failing to thrive in the boarding school environment. Teachers say B sat in the back and never took notes. I watch her bring food from her dorm room instead of to her dorm room instead of eating in the dining hall with the other students. Her roommate requested to switch rooms. Uh, Sarah complained that B was spending study hours watching Josh Groban perform Oh Holy Night on YouTube. Mm-hmm. So this is a carryover from mm-hmm. when she was... Uh, Went to the Rockettes. Mm-hmm. Um, hoping there was a portal into B, I sent a chaplain to her dorm. He said he found her apathetic to spiritually, to spiritual discourse, which is interesting because she keeps listening to A Holy Night. Right. So um, hmm. basically he is talking about how he thinks it's in B's best interest to be removed from this boarding school. And there's also commentary uh, from Sarah, B's roommate. Um, Yesterday afternoon, while B was away, Snare snuck a peek at B's, quote, book. Sarah was so shaken by its contents, in particular, an FBI document marked confidential. Mm -hmm. And she ran straight to me. First of all, Sarah, you're a sneaky little cunt. Yeah, come on, Uh, (laughs) Sarah. (laughs) um, And B's writing a book. And so we find out that's how she's compiling all of this uh, information this is this this the book that we hold in our hands is bees is bees and it's interesting too like b is such a good student but she's now putting all her energy not only into this book but like maybe when i was younger and even now actually i still do this if there's like something that moves me very greatly like how oh holy night moved her Mm -hmm. you know i'll be at my computer listening to that song over and over again like okay Uh, like the other day like one of my favorite video game series came out with a new game and like the opening like title screen like that was stuck in my head so much like anytime I hear it now I start to like kind of tear up a little yeah like and it's just weird because it's just interesting how music or anything really can move you in that way you don't want to leave it you kind of you're in like a high moment and you don't want to stop being a part of that oh no I I completely get and understand you yeah. and not getting high on drugs <laughs> getting high on life folks okay okay <laughs> oh this is funny hmm. this whole segment i completely forgot about this hmm. from sulin to audrey so uh we find out like this is before uh bruce jessup's so the credit card information even though that was at the end of this chapter we know that sulin and elgin uh, found out about this and then went to the port to kind of um, ambush Bernadette when she got off from, oh. from the cruise boat. Right, right. So this is... I forgot, yeah. Yeah. So this is a conversation between Sulin and Audrey. Um, uh, Audrey, I'm in the middle of the most horrific nightmare. I should write to a fellow VAVite uh but I can't because my laptop <laughs> was <laughs> with all my addresses is dead. And yours is the only email address I know by heart. I'm in an internet cafe in South America, comma, comma. 
Uh, and this keyboard is so dirty and sticky and horrible. <laughs> and the P makes a B and the B makes a P and the comma stick and you have to immediately hit PAX base uh, or else the whole email will e commas. <laughs> so like it's that really um, bad yeah i forgot email. about this yeah it was so good and you had to put money in uh to make it work it's a hunk of junk they found her they found Punadette yesterday a charge of th- uh 1300 for the arctic cruise comp c- c- oh god it's I know. so hard company company, company. <laughs> uh showed a b- <laughs> on Elgin's visa card, Elgin called the travel agency who confirmed it. <laughs> so that's that's how they, they found out. So they immediately took a, a flight to uh, South America to get her. And it's it's funny um, that it ends with um, this horrible keyboard. I must, must, must... <laughs> I pee right there standing by Elgin's side when Punadette gets off the ship tomorrow. If he doesn't tell her I'm pregnant, you better believe I will. And that's it. So Elgin also didn't be- like couldn't believe that Sulin was pregnant. Right. So uh, I-, I thought yeah. that was really funny. If you listen to the audio book of this, that section is so funny. Is it? Yeah. That's and awesome. the-, the reader did such a good job with that i i don't know how she did it that's She's awesome so good at it but yeah so awesome. just a little bit more commentary yeah. on that i for i'm glad you saw that because i completely forgot about forgot the part about and too. that's important actually so yeah. very nice yeah a, a, a small part but a lot packed into it yeah every what i also like about this book is that every every journal entry is intentional like yeah. to not only and not only that but it's so smart like it not only builds on the characters but it builds on the plot so like because a lot of times it's okay to do character development that might not be contributing to the plot Mm -hmm. like that's like i love that kind of stuff but the problem is sometimes is that it's not as tight as it could be and this book is so tight like Mm -hmm. everything is so intentional what I think I was going to make a really dirty joke. Oh, man. I knew it. I'm like sitting here and you start laughing. I'm like, oh, God. I'm like, let's not go there. <laughs> was, I'm going to say, take like an 18 year old's pussy. Oh, my <laughs> She did it. She said it. Uh, <laughs> that's the, wow. I haven't even been you know drinking. what just popped in my head? Just, I was like, that's my maiden call. <laughs> That literally For just popped the in my love head. Of God, <laughs> whenever you get intimate with someone, please make that noise. <laughs> yeah, that like, would be amazing. It, it, it's like uh, what? <laughs> I, <laughs> listeners, oh does this get you going? <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't kink shame. It might be someone. Exactly. <laughs> that is amazing. I am starved. <laughs> oh man, not for the podcast. I mean, like I can, but it okay. depends if my brother listens. Oh. <laughs> so one time, Kevin and I were doing it. Mm-hmm. Oh man, no, oh, I'm man. not gonna do it. <laughs> I'll take <you> out. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah. Gross. <laughs> I love how you're like. We were doing it. We're uh, doing the dirty. Remember when you're baby kids. making. <laughs> you know when you're kids and like you talk about that kind of stuff. Like when I was younger, I used to think that you could get pregnant from like just kissing. Oh, so Danielle. so I like. Uh, <laughs> my first kiss was on a trampoline at the age of 11. Uh, oh, I know. that's actually really cute. My, so <laughs> it's inter- So my brother, it was me, my brother, his friend Colin, and my friend Christina. Mm, we had Colin. another friend, Colin. Oh, do you did it t- wasn't Colin then? What? No, yeah. Colin, oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> um, and um, he, his sister Kelly was also there, but she was mad. She didn't want to jump on the trampoline, so she was listening to music on the front porch. <laughs> um and Brian, my brother, kissed Christina, and I kissed Colin. Aww. And I went home, and I said to my grandma, I started crying. I was like, I think I might get pregnant. She's like, why? And I was like, just kiss Colin. <laughs> She's like, you're not going to get pregnant. <laughs> that must have been horrifying for her. <sighs> God, yeah, kids children. say the darnest things. Yeah, especially, like, I was in fifth grade at the time. Like, fifth graders, you know what oh, I mean? No, yeah. Fifth graders. I just realized you're fifth grade when you're 10 oh i was 11 actually 11, yeah, yeah i'm yeah because my birthday yeah but um but oh, yeah that's so funny um 
Oh, goodness. I learned from sex from, like, movies and TV shows. I, I never had, like, the talk. Yeah, my parents say they did the talk, but, like, I don't believe them for a second because I don't <laughs> I remember it. I your parents giving you the yeah, talk. Yeah, I don't remember it. And, like you said, I learned from movies and TV shows. Yeah. I mean, literally. Like, it. I don't know what I thought before. <laughs> like, <laughs> I really don't. So that's why I don't think they gave me the talk. Right. Um, But, yeah. <laughs> sex right. talk with Danielle and Brittany. Yeah. <laughs> You put the thing in the thing, and then boom, baby. <laughs> like, I didn't understand the joke, that's what she said until college. Yeah. Oh, no. Or what about this? Like, <laughs> when I was in high school, it's like... She did the okay sign and then stuck her finger in yeah. it. Oh, yeah, right. Not visual medium, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, but, like, so, it's interesting. <laughs> oh, sex talk with Danielle and Brittany. Oh, new podcast idea. Ooh. Just kidding. Get Brian on. Have- oh, yeah, get oh, Brian sorry, on Brian. here. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, let's talk about that kind of stuff with Brian. Oh, that would be fun. <laughs> I worked with Brian. <laughs> I know Brian personally. So, but anyway, right. uh, so that's going to wrap up our episode, folks. Mm-hmm. We only have two more parts left, right? Six and seven. Two more parts in the book, and then we'll have our wrap up episode. Yes, we'll me. rate the book. Woo. All that fun stuff. So, not too much longer to go before we finish the book. Mm-hmm. Um, so, for all of those of you who enjoyed our episode, who enjoy the show, want to check us out further, you can subscribe on iTunes, Google Play Music. Uh, I listen to us on Podcast Addict. Podcast Addict, Stitcher. Um, we're on most places where podcasts are released. Um, we're not on Spotify. That's probably the only place we're not. We are working on that, but unfortunately, there's really that's there's kind of out of our of control. Things. Yeah. Um, but that's but we're pretty much on every other platform because platforms take from itunes usually yeah um so yeah and if you want to check us out on social media all of our links will be on our website which will mm-hmm. be in our show notes mm-hmm. our website is ba bat podcast.com and there you can find again all of our social media links we're on twitter instagram facebook goodreads, goodreads. we have a gmail and yeah. obviously a voicemail a voicemail leave us a voicemail <laughs> folks brian does like come yeah. on now missing missed opportunity folks come on now. <laughs> uh I think that's it. I, think I that, feel like uh, Katie Hartung uh, mm. did our cover art, yes, and design, and Kevin uh, McLeod, McLeod, yeah, did our music. It. Yes, yes. yes <laughs> Forgot for a second. Forgot there, for yeah. a second. So did I. But I was kind of like, I think, yeah, <laughs> yeah, because we didn't uh, make our intro yet. Even no, though, you know, we're almost done. We have it. Yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we're on top of things. <laughs> like uh, that's actually my job. I'm so sorry, guys. Jesus but anyway, Christ, it's like, get it, pull it together, woman. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so with all that being said, thank you for listening. And we will talk to you all next time. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>